contacted it, that, that uh, I was put down with the task only two days ago. So we'll deal with that type of thing also. Um, you know, uh, since, you know, uh, I don't know what happened. Um, like I said, uh, it, it's kind of, it's, it, it's kind of impossible not to be rolling around here without some spiritual protection. Because you, you can't have enough Negroes around here that's gonna get your back. You see what I'm saying? And so it's, it's it really, in this particular day and age, if you don't have nothing, you know, I ain't talking about no light shit either. We talking about you need to conjure up all your shit, all your stuff and all, and go for what you know. And if you don't have nothing, make up something. Remember, the best stuff is the stuff that you make up yourself because it's coming from the, your own subconscious mind. You see what I'm saying? And so we're going to deal with that type of stuff also too. And another thing too, in these particular days, I'm going to be honest with you. If you're, if, you're, if, if you're not getting any nourishing from groups, being in your group, and your shit is stifled, you know, something on your mind, but you can't deal with it because you're in a motherfucking group, and you got to be with the agenda of the group. In that case, it's time now to get out of all doggone sectarian groups. Now, we're not talking about the mass of the people. We're not talking about the people in the groups. We're talking about the ones that's supposed to be the gods and goddesses that's supposed to rise up that the groups is talking about. That's you. You know, it ain't going to come from some big green-eyed man. It's going to come from you. So right now, it's really paramount that you get out of all types of doggone groups and organizations and all that type of stuff because that's going to be, that's going to um, leave you short-handed. You see what I'm saying? You're going to be left holding the bag with that type of stuff because you cannot get the type of a nourishment in the millennium, because this is the millennium, 2001, and in actuality, not even just 2001, now remember that African holiday didn't start until Sirius Rising, the African New Year. Didn't start till Sirius Rising, that's it. Do you know even the Greeks, this book called Karina's book on Dionysus, now Dionysus come to find out is a deity that was that was fallen to the Greeks that they basically incorporated into their pantheons that comes from the Minoans, which worship the bull, Apis, and the bull of Osiris. And this thing goes all the way back to Dionysus cult, goes all the way back to pre-dynastic Kemet. When it was the whole Typhonian line, you got Dionysus, goes up into India as the god Shiva. You see what I'm saying? Um, but even in the book Dionysus, uh, Carl Karina's book, it, no, the Greeks or the damn Romans didn't jump off nothing until Sirius rose. So they were even on African time. Because we're talking about pre-Hellenistic uh, uh, Greeks. We're talking about the Etruscans, the black people that we show in the actual book in this uh, catalog that we just printed. Catalog book, we got that picture back up in here too. Of the black man, the original Greek, that looked like Isaac Hayes. We talked about it. The original Greco Roman looked like Isaac Hayes. So uh, these people were nothing but Camite origin or African origin. But even in Carl Karina's book, he talks about Icaros, which is Sirius rising. And nothing jumped off until Sirius rising. That was the that was the entire New Year for the African world or the ancient world all this ancient Mesopotamia, ancient Babylonia, and stuff like that. That was the entire African New Year. Now, I agree with Walter Williams um, where he talks about that because I had some of the same problems whereas Asa Hilliard had a book called When Egypt Ruled the East by Keatskill. And in Keatskill's book, he showed a big square of all the part that Kemet ruled. And all of that was Mesopotamia and stuff, even in the Kit Steel book, When Egypt Ruled the East. So I agree with Walter Williams on that because I always knew that. And even Collett talked about that being Northeast Africa. So he's right, all the Mesopotamia, Babylonia, Samaria, and all that type of thing is later names for just Africa, or what you want to call it, Cam, or Cush, or Punt. You see what I'm saying? And so, but Dionysus come from the Minoan which is a form of the whole Trusky, Trusky thing. So even in this so-called quote-unquote Greco-Roman world, nobody did anything until Sirius rising. So that means that your, your new year just started about a month ago. Because if we know that the millennium was not 2000, we know that the millennium was 2000, 
Um, one, then if you take the African part, the millennium ain't based on anything only started in July. Then you understand why the motherfucking sharks is biting the shit out of people's ass, including fucked up niggas. That's a sign there now, because you know they say nature really, nature never really hit the ghetto. Nature really never really hit black people, but now nature's starting to fuck up Negroes. Niggas down there all snorkeling and shit. The old bourgeoisie niggas that crack that, that shark don't know. That's the same old state cracker to him. See? Now there's an astral body and all kind of force fields that come around humans. You go right down to that fucking subway. You'll see rats and shit. They'll run all over that stuff. They won't hit that goddamn third rail. Watch it. They won't hit that third rail at all. Right? They all know that your magnetic force fields. They can tell a damn force field from a white man. And what the hell is it? What the hell that shark put off that black man's leg for? See what I'm saying? But then again, nigga is crackers. Uncle Tom is not one or two people that we used to point out. When I talked about this last time, we used to point out the Uncle Toms in the community. Now Uncle Tom is the race. Negroes and negresses. Toms and Thomasinas. It is the race. So we're talking about Uncle Tomism as a racial unit. It is the modern 20th century racial unit. Why is that? Because anytime you talk about white people, Negroes get mad. Get pissed. You see. So we're not so so then all of a sudden if you got Toms and Thomasinas as you think, so are you. So you a Tom and Thomasina, you think like a white person. Then the goddamn shark come, they don't know the difference. You know the sharks never fucked up black people. You see what I'm saying? This way this shit going. You gotta watch it. Oh, it's a lot of stuff going down and all. It's, it's a lot of stuff going down. A lot of stuff and all. Um, you see, so we're gonna get into all of that. We're gonna get into all of that and all. Um, I have this, uh, this book catalog that has several art articles in here, plus an article from 1951. Did I, did, I, did I ever give any of those out here in New York? The article in 1951 that Honorable Elijah Muhammad um, predicted AIDS and cloning and all that shit in 1951? They got an article up in here that I got about six years, about five years ago, of Honorable Elijah Muhammad predicting all of this stuff, and we have the actual article up in here, plus some new stuff on the... Um, uh, the Moors, I got an interview up in here and a couple things up in here. So we got this, this book uh, here. For people to ask what I brought, I brought this, this catalog and all uh, for the people that, um, you know, they, they want to get that. Also, um, how many people saw the conference tapes? Anybody saw any of the conference tapes? Um, we have a sister here that, that's from Long Island. Well, she, she was from Long Island. She went to Atlanta and slum down south for about 10 years and all. Became a country girl. Then she came back up here, now she get ready to go back down south. But anyway, uh, she did a, a whole lecture on the goddess. And she's like one of the former experts on the goddess and stuff. So, uh, um, and um, she's in the Hemet Summit if you get those tapes. But she's here tonight and all. But also, she did a lot of, uh, she did some, she did some, some, if you get the tape, she did some, some photographs that she had a significant other draw, this artist out of Long Island. And, um, uh, uh, and it has segment, uh, Kali, Lilith, uh, Medusa. So anyway, the people were asking, could they get the actual artwork um, produced and all, so they produced uh, some of this on the t-shirts um, of the goddess segment, and, um, and also the uh, goddess Medusa. You know, the whole dreadlock thing and all. So uh, you might want to get down with this and all. Um, what's the number? 631-254-9103. Well, you gonna go by Sky or Dwayne? Just get in touch with Sky. You get that cool name, this Sky. Fuck the dumb shit, this Sky, you know. So you just contact Sky at, one more time, 631-254-9103. And uh, get these, how much they going for? 25, and uh, you know, the color and all, you know, uh, you know, you might, you might can, uh, step to the brother tonight and 
take some off his hands and all. So we had the catalog and all. We were doing our little sales pitch. Um, you know, now, you know, I used to do, I used to roll for years with nothing. Then people used to then people start getting getting upset. You know, so all of a sudden, you know, but basically all of that because you know I rolled for years for nothing and, and nothing for nothing leaves nothing and end up broke. And, Motherfucker rolled on me uh, June and cut off my damn gas. He was like, I'm here to cut off the gas. I like, fuck it, it's hot now, shit. <laughs> I said, fuck it, I borrowed water to wash my dishes. Borrowed water to wash my dishes. And I take cold showers, shit. That's all right to that. You, know, you get in there, you put this shoulder in, you get that one up, you put the other shoulder, and you get, and you get all this in. Uh, down here, it's, down here it's so hot, you can just stick this down, it don't matter. Down here, you, that, you, you just stick your head, you know, it's the shoulder and that back and shit. So you stick it in there and then you go and you get that back. Once you do the back is the shit to fuck you up. That back. But once you get all that going and shit, you know, it's a ritual. It's a ritual. And you know, you, you know you're going to do it after 12, because you know, in that morning. You know what I'm saying? So it's all, I was like, fuck it. I got, I got electricity, you know. Got electricity and all, you know. And um, so they cut off my gas and shit. So, it, so, so, so the nigga was like, you know how the shit is. Let him cut that shit off for the summer. Then by the October, especially down south, by the October, then you roll up there and you make some negotiation with them people. Get your shit cut back on. You know, get your shit cut back on. So, uh, uh, so that's one thing. Now I wanna, um, I wanna just call out to these particular deities, and I'm gonna say that because the simple fact, um, these are the ones I'm rolling with for protection, not because of them calling and stuff, but from protection from some other entities, and I'm gonna go into tonight also too, that rushed on my ass um, uh, about a week ago. And boy, there's a whole war going on in the spirit world. And anyway, these babies rushed on me about a week ago, and they had it for a while. About an hour, I was like, you know, I'm ready to die, goddammit. This motherfucker shit hurt. This shit y'all put on my ass hurt. I said, fuck this. So I was like, but these babies here got in my body, and they worked, and they worked, and they got that shit up out of me. But it was some, some other ones in the other room. You got the light in the damn dark. And the light ain't nothing but the ones that rule in this supremacy in this dimension, and they don't want to get up off the goddamn power. You see what I'm saying? They don't want to get up off the power. Now it's time for us to rise, and they want to hang around some more. And we'll get into that type of stuff, but this shit is real. See, I done made contact. We got a lot of stuff to cover because I made a lot of good contact. But when we made this contact in March, all of a sudden, some spirits started bum rushing a nigga. And they hit me, they hit another, hit, a, hit another sister real bad. And I'm not talking about the shit where they come and kill your ass. And um, so these babies, the ones I got out of uh, South America, um, is the ones that I roll with now. So they brought a nigga back from the dead about last Monday. You see, so y'all excuse me, my pantheon I'm gonna be dealing with tonight will be these particular ones from the uh, Congo rights. Uh, so let's give a shout out to Zara Banda, Madre de Agua, Madre de la Luna, La Santissima Muerte, El Pista Negro, El Pista Rey, Mama Shola, Los Espíritus and Tranquilas, Francisco de Sweet Reyes, San Simón, La Santissima Peter Eman. Okay, uh, I got a couple of other ones that came through, wanting to get down, they want to get their shout out. Otincha. Shayola, uh, Tiacha, Shumala, Omogumo, Kakumbo, Lokeo, Kakumbo, Lokeo. Uh, Shay, want to give out a shout out to Oshu. I uh, want to give a shout out to Yemen Yah. want to give a shout out to uh, Aya, Set Mayat, Het Heru. want to give a shout out um, to uh, um, Urzuni. Um, let's see, uh, Olaku, um, Olaku, um, and, um, Aset, Osa, Heru, Heru Raha, Bess, Awas, Mu Awas, Sutan, Sut Nubit, Sut Nessi, uh, uh, John Nessi, uh, 
Osa Kitiamenti, uh, Akidna, um, Dionysus, uh, Bacchus, Phanes, Eros, Sheba, Rudra, Pravati, Sadi, Kali, Kalima, uh, Chena Master, Devi, Lakshmi, Durga, Kama, not Kama, but Kama, Agni, Sama, Vertra. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll go with that right now. I'll shake. Okay. Okay, so we got that out of the way. And let's roll uh, with um, some things. First of all, we want to deal with a couple things. I'll deal with the college, but right now, let's deal with this one thing. Uh, as you know, we're going to get into this right now, is this particular black hole that we are in. Uh, the sister just came up and just... Uh, just back me up on this because they also have a uh, uh, they also have an article that just came out what Thursday talking about the same black hole that they're talking about here in the Discover magazine. So we're going to get into that type of stuff also. But this is one of the keys that's actually happening. And the spirit gave me this, and I always check stuff up in the spirit realm. Um, there's a lot of mold going around because of it, and bacteria because of that black hole. Now they got this mold that they got in these rich people houses all in Texas and stuff, and they got to move out of these mansions. I mean, huge mansions and stuff. The whole thing and stuff that's getting all messed up. That is because of the, this black hole we're in. But also, too, if you have dreadlocks, um, there's a lot of bacteria that can get in your dreadlocks if you don't take care of them in the right way. Um, because of the mold and all kind of shit that's happening. Now, believe it or not, uh, one of the best things of the bacteria is some fucking antibacterial soap. I'm talking about that palm olive, that joy. Now remember, our Consumer Report did a, a special back in 1985, and they said the biggest hoax out here was shampoo. They said you can wash your hair with dishwashing liquid. Same shit. They just laughing at the motherfucker. They dealing with fragrances and stuff. You know what I'm saying? And you, the biggest hoax is damn shampoo. But now that antibacterial. The stuff that you know, now you know, everything is antibacterial. There's a reason why all of a, sh all of a sudden, since 1993, everything became antibacterial. You see what I'm saying? But that's one of the keys, is get some antibacterial shit for your locks and for the, that type of stuff where you can, uh, for your hair and stuff. Um, also, um, believe it or not, fucking antibacterial air freshener. You can spray that shit on your head too. Serious business. Now, you know, you, you, they, you, before, before we got into kind we used to spray all kind of shit, wig spray and hairspray and all this kind of thing. But we're talking about some stuff because it's a lot of mold going on, a lot of stuff going around right now. That's very key. That's, that's, that's very key right now. What's that? The other day, they had a CEA agent in Long Island. He went out to see where some girls in his cesspool. His cesspool collapsed. He drowned. There you have it. Yeah. There you have it. There you have it. Now, I want to get into one thing. First of all, two want to get into two things. Number one, the West Nile disease broke out in 1999 here in, in, in Atlanta, uh, in, in New York, and it was dealing with the whole Malathion shit. So I just knew it. I said, nah, I said, this shit has got to come to the CDC land, Atlanta. Atlanta. And sure enough, two years later, this thing is broken out in Atlanta. Two weeks ago, somebody came, the first case came down about two, three weeks ago, the first case came down of this West Nile disease, and somebody died. Then last week, another person died, both black people in the black community. So they said, fuck it, we got to spray all of Fulton County, the complete black community in Atlanta. So whatever Negroes had down there, they said, because it's basically the city has gone mostly white since the Olympics. And you know, also, I mean, as far as running shit and all, so basically, they're going to spray the entire Fulton County, so it's the same bull that's going down. And it's going down right in Atlanta, and even the people who tested the actual, they, they caught about 2,000 mosquitoes one night last Thursday. The people who tested it was a group out of Detroit, uh, out of Chicago, that worked on the one here in Atlanta. 
The people who are going to be doing the spraying is, is another, uh, another group that worked on the one here in New York, excuse me. So this, they got that hit down there. And so here's another thing. That, and do you know some, um, there's a lot of websites on chemtrails, and one of the websites on chemtrails said that one of the reasons for the chemtrail is to try to get some types of vaccines and some types of uh, uh, biological warfare to stop the kundalini energy. They say stop ascension, but it's actually to stop the kundalini energy. That's what they're talking about. So when, they, so when David Icke and all them crackers talking about the reptilians, they're talking about the kundalini energy, and that's a cold word. You see what I'm saying? David Icke ain't number the government fucking agent. Him and all the rest of them crackers, you see what I'm saying? And stuff. So when you ever hear, hear this thing here, that's a cold word when they're talking about that. Now, he went down to Africa with the guy Kweta Mutwa, and got him to, he kind of slurred him to, to, to present what David Icke's agenda was based on these reptilians in Quaker Mutois' way. But I got a problem with Quaker Mutois, because Quaker Mutois used to work for the South African government. And he said in the damn tape that the South Africans almost killed him because they found out he was on the in 1976. Remember they said that on the tape? Quaker Mutois. He, but my point here is, is he, the guy was given South African mythology. And David Icke was trying to sway him to say something about his agenda based on these reptilians because uh, he knew he had to authenticate it by getting an African to do it. So it's very key. So uh, it, 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 it's, it's very key how this whole thing goes. But the reptilian that they're talking about, cold word, is the caducer, the staff in the caducer is the kundalini race of people. And we're the kundalini race of people because we're the only people that have this full use of the kundalini because the kundalini has to filter out with what? The pineal gland. So we're the real kundalini people, you see. So, um, so they drop, so, so in these chemtrails, one guy said, watch the skies. Because it said, hell, the skies are almost, it's not a real blue no more. It's a, it can get halfway, but most of the time it's a, a light grayish blue, but not this real blue. On, and most days, they'll give you the real good blue day when you're going to have a little festival. But on most of them days, that shit is, even when the sun is shining, that shit has got the uh, look of an overcast, you see. So, they, but in, in, in the chemtrails uh, uh, information coming off of the internet, they say they're dropping this shit to stop ascension. But actually, it's for the Kundalini people because now they got the whole Malathion thing going on down in Atlanta. And that's to drop that shit to make sure that nobody's stuff rises. You see, so they got this thing going on. Now, getting back to the, getting back to the sharks. Now, did anybody see this? That they had a shark, this is what the NBC News said. They had a shark convention. You heard this, you saw this shit? It was about a hundred sharks, but come to find out it was about a thousand that met. These sharks were just met for just chilling. And it wasn't no way out somewhere. It was right up there with all the people. They had people swimming around and shit. But it's interesting. My point is, is if these if they sharks are biting off the legs, why the hell is this little girl paddling? That would be like buffet for their ass. But they just let her go because they was intelligent. They was having a doggone meeting. It was out of the and they said it was a shark convention. I'm going to break the science on what this shit is really, really about. We'll give you the metaphysical science on the shark shit. So they got they had about a thousand sharks. Then come to find out they had another meeting. About a week after they had the meeting, they had a meeting to, to let you understand that people didn't see this thing. They had a doggone meeting. And they had like just, they were just sharks just swimming around in the water like they were talking to each other. And I mean, it was just tons of them. Now, you know, the, the, and, and the shark experts, all these fucking experts. Oh, it ain't nothing to fear. Wait a minute. You got a fucking thousand sharks swimming around in a motherfucking damn your backyard. And that ain't nothing to worry about. You see, but they always got a root, got, got to do it that way. They said they had two meetings since then. Then all of a sudden, these sharks is biting, so they say, well, you know, oh, they have shark attacks all the time. Well, they bit off a little boy. They say, well, oh, you just ran, because they bit a little boy leg off, and they got all that attention. They said, we'll show your monkey ass. They bit a one little cracker leg off, the next day they bit another cracker, bit two of them, 
than one survived. But then they bit that damn brother. You see what I'm saying? That's because they know now there ain't no difference between black and white when it comes to doggone Negroes no more. We have a ride, so your ass will ride right in the mouth of a motherfucking shark. You see? So, this, they got these sharks biting up everything. There's a reason because of that. Number one, number one, in a lot of the metaphysical information in the early 90s, they was trying to, they was trying to say that the dolphins represented no more of the whole Dogon thing. The fish, no more. You know the whole fish thing? You got no more in the Dogon mythology. You got the fish representing Jesus in the Christian mythology. You got Ionis, the fish man, also in the so-called Sumerian mythology. Um, now they got all these different aspects of the fish. Um, in different ancient mythology, but we know that the one that the Dogon say no more will return. They were dealing with the dolphins. The, you know, the, the, the white people saying no, they, they said no, these are the dolphins. But in actuality, they said that the normals was coming to kick some ass. The Hopi Indians say they got them kachinas. The kachinas is coming back to kick some ass. And they said it'll be some spiritual people going against physical people. But you hear this thing here? You, you heard about it a couple of months ago? They even came on the key. Dolphins do this shit. So anyway, you got the whole no more thing going on. Now to break it down even more, you got to go back to two things happen that they know. They know the hurricanes come from where? The middle passage. All right? They know that the, the way of the hurricanes in hurricane season come the same way that the slave ships came. Okay? Now we know that any type of cataclysmic and disastrous event in history will create vortexes of disaster. You got your Bermuda Triangle shit to go on. You got stuff all over the world. You got the Goli Island. Anytime these niggas come over, you know, you big nigga from Washington, D.C. and shit. You know what I'm saying? And all your family work in the White House and you go up in Goli Island and next thing you know, your ass is hollering like a damn slave and shit. You seen this stuff here. Even Sam Kofi showed you that and all, but you know, that really happens. So there's got all, they have all types of things that happen based on slavery. So you got the hurricanes come through every year based on some shit that happened in the Middle Passage in the Atlantic. That's energy. Those are spirits. Same spirits that got into the two lions in Africa. And in the movie, the ghost in the darkness. And in the movie, they say, and when they, when they got to the Maasai, the Maasai say, that ain't no doggone arm. That's no arm. No, no, no lions, that's a, those are spirits, ghosts and darkness. You see what I'm saying? Now, um, you, you, you got different things that happen that way. And they got those, they said that they got the two lions in Chicago, in the Natural Museum of History in Chicago, and they say, what, when people look in their eyes today, even though they put the glass eyes and shit up in there, still they say the shit strikes fear in you. So the spirit realm can do things. Now, you got the middle passage, you got all that hurricane stuff to start happening. You see? And they hit the islands first because the islands was the first to receive the slaves. You know, the whole Caribbean. You see? And so, and, and uh, they hit, Hugo came to Charleston, South Carolina, one of the greatest slave ports ever, and tore that shit up back in what, 91 or, or 91 or 92. You see, so you got this thing that happens in the Middle Passage. All right. In the story of the Middle Passage, I also went down in the Middle Passage was, if you had a slave ship and you had an X amount of slaves that you had to get to port at a certain time, if you didn't arrive on that day, they could charge you less for the slaves. So when the, slow, when the, when, when the ships started getting slow, they had to avoid slaves to pick up speed. 
And what they say happened, the sharks would swallow, would follow the slowest boats because they knew food was coming off the side. Now, meanwhile, that means they got enough sharks that built enough slaves and ate on slaves, but what happens? It's, it's, in, the, it's in the movie Ravenous. It's in the movie, it's in that book, Melanin People. They call it Pasquati. When you eat somebody, you take on their spirit. The Native Americans talked about it in the movie Ravenous. Hmm? Yeah, all, eating blood of my blood, flesh of my flesh, and all this. Uh, there's a book called Jesus, The Last Days of the Vampire. They sell it down in Atlanta. White people sell, it, sell a book down in Atlanta. We're going to get into some stuff. Because that taps into the whole Aaliyah shit that went down. Now, now, so, anyway, um, these sharks would bite on these slaves. And what would happen? They probably, they said that they, they was aborting literally dozens and dozens and hundreds of slaves over 300 something years or longer than that. You see what I'm saying? So as a result, the spirit enters into the slave and it is trapped. Now let me explain something. There's a book called Death, Dreams, and Vampires. I didn't bring it. This is a critical study. This ain't no really like, oh, that's some comic book shit. No, these motherfuckers, uh, Yale University put this shit out. You thinking there's some bullshit, but them crackers be on the shit. You know what I'm saying? State University in New York put out Pastor Beverly Randolph's book, Black Occultist. You see, so we be like, that's some bullshit. No, you think it's some bullshit. The same shit that's in Forbidden Planet is in State University in New York, Princeton University, Yale University. These crackers don't be bullshit. You know, we the motherfuckers be bullshitting around in a fucked up religion for years or some motherfucker who ain't never coming back. You see what I'm saying? You know, now the white people, they know, they don't know if it, you know, they ain't gonna bullshit about it. If it don't work, they say, well, fuck that. We gotta go to the next system. You know, that's why you go down to New Orleans and all, you go to the, 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 the Marie Nouveau's Museum of Voodoo, ain't nothing in there but crackers. Tell they Voodoo and priests. They got three million Yoruba practitioners. White practitioners in the United States. Now, I ain't say, I said three million white human practitioners. You got a white Jew in Chicago that sets over the head of the goddamn Yorubas in the United States. And that ain't including your Santeria, which is all of Latin America and all them crackers. Then you saturate the fuck, saturate the energy. And that shit don't work no more. Other than, you know, just going to get a little, you know, you feeding and all that shit. We ain't talking about no major shit. Take no crackers out. Because you done saturated in it. You done fucking the damn Nigerians and all them pimp that shit. They sell it to the highest bidder. See what I'm saying? And in, 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 in the niggas, because we love white people so much, I'm a priest. And a priest means I got to accept all my children. So one sister goes down into, uh, go get smuggled into Cuba. Real strong sister. Get smuggling in Cuba, they tell her that she got all these white motherfuckers she gotta deal with because goddamn Oshun and them said so. You see what I'm saying? I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop on that too based on the spirit realm and the spiritual one in a few minutes. So, going back, there's a book called a Dream, Death, Dreams, and Vampires, Yale University. And in there, basically what happens is, is the soul, when the soul dies, the soul, the soul identifies with the body. So basically that soul, oh, now I'm not talking about the spirit, there's a, just a different thing. The spirit is what runs the physical plane. That ain't nothing but energy that runs the matrix. White people have spirits, roaches have spirits. Rats have spirits. That's just the stuff that makes the shit move. That ain't nothing but energy. You see what I'm saying? That make the shit move. But, that, but we're the motherfuckers only have souls. A soul is different. A soul is a sun that existed prior to creation. That's the difference. A spirit, everything is a right say, I cut you, you bleed. And I believe that's why we get that's why we get into the occult and all this shit, and we can't understand, and we always thinking this about white people, and white people have spirits and all that. 
They have a spirit, a spirit. Everything got a spirit. A spider got a fucking spirit. A rat got a motherfucking spirit. A snail got a spirit. But a soul is different. A soul is a sun, solar. S-U-N-S-O-N, that's the difference. So the soul, once the spirit leaves, the soul remains in the body. And the soul identifies with because it was trapped and it doesn't rise up until the body decomposes. Then it's the old fuck. I see my goddamn ribs. I must be dead. Then the soul exits. Now, that's why the, the people in India would burn the body so that they could take that soul and direct that soul back. Because some souls was high, they didn't want to lose for a reincarnation. So they could direct that soul and, 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 and say, well, let's go and reincarnate this motherfucker over here. Okay, go ahead. Let me know when you're ready. Ready? So they say this, this soul, they will say the soul is going to reincarnate in this person over here. So they can direct that soul, they can go and get that soul, uh, or that person, or that incarnate, and they can teach that person, and therefore it, it didn't end up being an advanced priest, but went up to the astral light and got shot back down on the motherfucking body, and ended up somewhere uh, tap dancing. This motherfucker was a damn bill, he was a fucking advanced priest, he go up here, you know, he's a vast priest walking through walls and shit. Go up to that fucking fucked up astro light. Get snapped back down on the bottom of that field. He peeled both angles and shit. That old shit. You see? So. <laughs> so they say, we gotta save this song. Now, when the motherfucker, they be like, well, let that motherfucker read his car. He wasn't shit no way. You know what I'm saying? We talking about advanced priests and stuff, or, or people that's got a high awareness. Then they would not want to lose those souls. Some of these, you know, they would not want to lose those souls, so they would have to direct it. So they would burn the body so that they could get the reincarnation factor up fast and the soul escapes in a matter of minutes when the body is burned, and they can deal with that stuff. You see what I'm saying? So, when the shark eats the soul or the body. The soul remains in the shark. You heard those stories, Jonah and the whale? It's metaphysical stuff. But actually the whale represents the physical illusion, the matrix, the Maya. And Jonah trapped in the whale is the story of us trapped in the whale. But also, the, they eat the shark, the, the, east, the shark eats the human, and the soul remains in the damn shark. And when the shark gives birth to another baby, the soul continues into a reincarnation in the shark. So what you got here is you got motherfucking African slaves that was eaten 200 years ago, 150 years ago, 170 years ago. Now these motherfuckers is in the generation of the fucking sharks. Waiting on instructions from us. That means that right now, I'm going to tell you how this shit goes. You we say, we, we stop all the dumb shit. This is how this thing goes. That means that the best ritual is one you make up yourself. Because it's coming from the archetypes of the collective unconsciousness. That's all the African did and the ones you, you be doing now. So that means that one of y'all going to go home and write a goddamn ritual to the shots. Eat some crackers. Because they're waiting on instructions. That's how the shit goes. So, uh, when I asked the, 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 the spiritual plane, what are them motherfuckers doing? They said they're waiting on instructions. And I said, but well, damn, I, what, do I, what do they mean, waiting on instructions? And I said, oh shit. That means the only you got to do is go write your motherfucking shark ritual up. And write it up in, in your own way. That means if the shit say, play some Barry White. Play some Barry White. I put some Al Green. Then that means you got to play that Al Green because it ain't got nothing to do with no motherfucker beating on no drum 2,000 years ago. It's got something to do with your energy and your lifestyle. So they say eat some goddamn white chocolate. So shit you might like, you know. 
Some goddamn oysters and shit, you know. What other niggas eat? Some Krispy Kreme or whatever. You know. Then, if it tells you whatever to do, but see what you're doing, you're putting your own energy in it. And that kind of ritual works. You are the doggone avatar. You are a necromancer. You are a magician, the magus. So what's happening here is, is those are souls from the middle passage rearing up, they're ready to go. That's the goddamn army, and them crackers know that shit too. But on the other hand, these are slaves, they go in and they looking at this nigga down in Bahama, they say, this a motherfucking cracker. Buy his leg off too. Cause nobody don't wanna be black no more. See how that shit go? Nobody don't want to be black no more. And we, and you know, the conscious community always said it. The ones said, you know, there's going to come a time they're going to start fucking niggas up. Well, that's your sign now. You got to stay out of the goddamn water. I'm not you. Because they know the conscious people. Ain't nothing happening to the conscious people. You see what I'm saying? Are the ones that's, the, the ones that's true with this shit. Not, not somebody just following the crowd. You know, when the shit get tough, you go back to goddamn the church. <laughs> You see? Yeah. Right, see, going back to the church and shit. You know, that kind of stuff. So, this is what's going on now. The Aaliyah, this is why Aaliyah died. Ann Rice's vampire companion. You want to get a hell of a metaphysical book, get this motherfucker right here. Ann Rice's vampire companion. I did a book called Vampires from Heaven. Man, shoot, I got so much science, I drafted a whole lecture off of the science in the book. But then, you know, I'm a researcher. Come to find out, she, gets, she, she, she referenced in a book called the, a book called Sumerian Mythology, where she talks about a god called Amel. You always get these, anytime you get the Greek word Mel, it's actually Etruscan, that means black. The Greeks had a word for the Egyptians. We didn't know this in the Apple when we were trying to claim, you know, we were trying to get all this stuff back, that this stuff was black. The, e the Greeks called the Egyptians Malepus, or Malepus, Blackfoot. It's in the, it's, I, and I saw all these years that slipped me, it's in the books, in the serious mystery book, Robert Temple. He translates it, the word Malepus means Blackfoot and the Egyptians, the Greeks thought of the Egyptians as the Blackfoot ones. In Samaria, in the Gilgamesh and the Sumerian um, epics, they call them the black haired ones. So they got a god called Amel. And Amel gets in the queen of the dam, Akasha. Now Akasha starts the complete vampire journals. It started by one black woman in Egypt. This is in the book. And Akasha gets bitten by Amel, melanin. And from the Amel that's in her blood, she becomes the first vampire. Then Alicia is playing this Akasha, queen of the damn. Let me get this thing. Let me, let me read this. This is important. This is why the sister died. It's a couple of things. Okay, now, let me get this thing here. And it's in, you go, see, I'm not really, see, uh, it's not like this shit happened. I got to go make, I got to go and make up some shit. Go get my, go get my take, Vampires from Heaven. Also a book called, yeah, Vampires from Heaven is the stuff that's in there. Vampires from Heaven. It's in there, you know, where the book, the tape I did two years ago in 99, and now, lo and behold, this shit is coming out. But, let's look. Let's, I'm going to read something. Now, she got Osiris up in this shit, Armin Ra, Dionysus, Isis, Aset. She got the whole Camite Pantheon all up in this book. Now, look at this. Amel. Um, now, there's Amel. Amel is a spirit who fuses with Akasha. That's the queen of the damn. That's the one that Aaliyah is playing. To create the verse... The, f the first vampire, Rice and Rice, that's the person who is the person who wrote uh, Interview with the Vampire, and Anne Rice is the one, this is a dangerous motherfucking white ass bitch here. Yeah. Dangerous motherfucker bought a goddamn castle. 
Now I read this book, I said, wait a minute, this motherfucking cracker here is nothing to be fucking around with. This bitch knows some shit. But it was a mess. See, this is, see, it's always a part of trying to, it's investigative research. I was up here in New York in 1994. Did a lecture with me and Dawood at Phil Valentine's house. The next day, the brother Bill Lilly said, I want to take you to the sister store of Magical Child. I went to Magical Child and the guy had died and the shelves was all dust. There wasn't shit up in there. So we went to Enchantment. The can't Enchantment Metaphysical Store. And we went up in there. The crackers was like going crazy because the interview with the vampire was just released. And I'm like, what the fuck? And they was like, they had study groups. They had, they had a meeting in the back of the store, and they were discussing this shit, and they was getting in an argument because they knew the Pantheon, they were saying, no, it went this way. They were saying, no, it went that way. And I said, wait a minute. This Ann Rice shit here is some serious shit. These crackers up in Enchantment, it was almost like a convention going on. Now, and, and see, in Interview with the Vampire, in the movie, they say the best blood is of Creole blood. By the time they got the video, I don't know, they, you might get some videos, they cut it out of most of the videos, but you might be able to get it in this, they just put a new re-release video last year, they just came out with a, a new re-release video last year on Interview with the Vampire. They say the best blood is of the Creole blood because it has the melanin in it. Now it's the same cracker. Now, going right along. So, Anne Rice had read about Amel in the ancient Middle Eastern world for evil and the witches of Mukari and Metoret. Amel appears in several nights in the First Communion from Egypt, whom, uh, I'm going to get right to the point, where basically uh, it's, it's in the Akasha part. Basically, she fused, this Amel entity fuses itself in the blood of Akasha. Then Akasha becomes the first vampire coming out of Kemet. Then you get the movie in, uh, 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 Vampire in Brooklyn. Where did Aaron Murphy say they came from? Egypt. Who is the vampire? Break this down again. Osiris is in a coffin. Dracula is in a coffin. Dracula wears black. Osiris is the god of the black. It has the red on the inside of the cape, but he wears the black. Santa Claus got red, black, and white on. Dracula has red, black, and white. Guess what fucking Osiris is called? No, Santa Claus is called, in Spain, they call the Moor the Old Nick. The old Nick. You hear the Satan or the Saint Nick and all, you got that? But they call it the old Nick. This is in Moorish Spain. See what I'm saying? One man's God is another man's devil. See? Now, Osiris wears black. He's, got, he's the God of the black. Dracula, you get the word cons Drac Constellation of Draco. The great mother is from Draco. Constellation of Draco, the great dragon. The house of Dracul. They got a whole dragon society over in England. That white boy, Sir Lawrence Gardner, is a part of that shit. You see, all this stuff here coincides. So you get, even your boy Bram Stoker said, I got my story from a dream. And the time you get some shit from a dream, that's, some, that's no different than the same shit that they was doing umpteen years ago when the Book of Enoch was drafted. When Sefer, Yesa, all these particular books was, 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 was drafted. They get them from transmission. He said, I got my book from the dream. The second only to the King James Version of the Bible. There's only one book that's in sales. The number one book in the world that sells more than any book is the King James Version. That's because the British Museum, and excuse me, the British Empire spread that motherfucker all over the world. Took everybody else shit and put it in the British Museum and gave everybody else the goddamn Bible. So the number one book in the world is the King James Version. Second only to the King James Version is Bram Stoker's Dracula. That's because now there's something spiritual about that. 
Okay, Dracula has a coffin. Osiris has a sarcophagus. Dracula is always with his women. Osiris got him two women pipping beside him. Straight up. Neptune and Isis. You see what I'm saying? But there's always three women, the stitching witches, the gargons, Medusa, in the mythology. They got three women around Dracula and Bram Stoker. But they're talking about Egyptian mythology. So Akasha is the first person of the vampire chronicles that gets bitten by melanin. By melanin. So it's simple. They get a person that's virgin for a sacrifice. They couldn't get with Whitney. And she done been in the news too much. Done kiss Kevin Costner. You know Costner. Um, you know what I'm saying? And shit like that. She's a fucking space cadet. You know what I mean? They can't get no old moly rancid mildew that ass black asshole. It done been pimped out by the white man in Hollywood. No rheumatism ass. Moly mildew motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? They can't get her ass. They gotta get somebody pure. You know what I'm saying? Some fresh meat. You know, 22, 22, that's a nasty number. You see what I'm saying? So they gotta get somebody pure so they get a leader because they don't know about her yet. You see what I'm saying? They we knew, but it's a sacrifice. Now this sacrifice goes on every fucking two years. 99 it was Diana which is after the goddess Diana, D Diana or Artemis, Diana. Two years later, 99, uh, no, excuse me, 97, Diana. Two years later, 99, John John, little John F. Kennedy motherfucker, all of them died in the summer solstice after Sirius rises. Two years after that, Aaliyah, they done going black. They said, no, this is the fucking millennium. We got to sacrifice a nigga or a niggerish. Oh, you got Selena. Selena, I guarantee you, 1985. 85, 86, 85, I think. 95, 1995. See, every two years. So that's a Latin. That's it, Selena. I knew it was somebody else. Jehovah's Witness, uh, Wickedness, also. Also, now you also have other, other sacrifices also too. You got your Tupac and your Biggies and all of that type of thing. But we talk about on that every two years. Selena in 95. You see what I'm saying? Give or take. It's all the same shit. Well, she was up and coming, up and rising. She did her first uh, 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 English translated album right when the woman killed her. Some senseless bullshit. Up and coming. Then they get, so they go all the way, and Selena, Diana, John F. Kennedy Jr., then they say, well, you gotta get black, this is the millennium. And it's the summer solstice. That's when they juggle the up the ass. Summer solstice. Always a lot of shit happening when Sirius rises. Sirius rising. So here it is, they get Aaliyah, which means one exalted of the most high, something like that, it's a translation. Most high exalted one. That's my aunt. If they're dealing with a woman, see, this, see the whole concept? That's, that's the whole my aunt thing. So, they, so, but she, so but the key here is she had to become my aunt when she go do the queen of the dam. Now, in mythology, the dam, a lot of times, is not as you think it is. The dam is also the underworld. That's called the Catholic world. You see what I'm saying? And the queen of that, Mayat, would be a Catholic queen. What is a Catholic? Catholic means earth, the earth, they, they come, the underworld to, if you in the heavens, the underworld would actually be the earth. And Osiris in the underworld, the Osiris in the underworld would be the black body of the black human, because this is the mummified, this is the mummy. Osiris is inside of the mummy. So, the queen of the dam would be a form of my, my, Mayat, Set Mayat, Aset, Isis. Because you know the goddesses are interchangeable. 
Number seven, it's, 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 it's always, it's always, it's always a lot of stuff. JF, it's always, JFK died on the 28th. Okay. Well, it's always the sevens or whatever, you know. So the key here is the Aaliyah thing was a sacrifice. Yeah, well, see, it's all, it's, it's, it's just, but it's, it's just a sacrifice. Um, but the sacrifice is now becoming black. You see, because that's another energy that they're dealing with now. So they took the sister out on that level with serious rising. Now, this is when you know it's a sacrifice. You can watch entertainment tonight. They'll never have shit black. It's always white people, sexy Brad Pitt. Sexy motherfucking Brad Pitt. You know, black people be doing shit, all, all these movies and stuff, they never have nothing black. Then all of a sudden, man, oh, we're going to count down, they started doing, we're going to come back tomorrow and tell you some more shit about Aaliyah. We're going to come back tomorrow and tell you some more shit. And then they all the news are cupping his news corporations around the world. Like she, you know what I'm saying? Now here, that means that white people didn't even know about her until she was dead. It's like that Bruce Lee thing. Most motherfuckers didn't know about Bruce Lee until after Bruce Lee died. After they slayed that nigga ass. You see what I'm saying? That's when Bruce Lee became an international superstar. You see, right, that's true too, but also too, they slayed him. It was a ritual back in 1973. He died June 30th, 1973. They slayed that nigga in 73 because they knew that they was going to drop into the dragon around September of 1973. And into the dragon was a ritual movie to kill the black man. Don't let nobody fool you. Where the fuck you think they got Jim Kelly ass on the movie poster hanging up in them goddamn chains? And not only did they kill him, it wasn't fucking enough to kill him. They had to drop him in fucking acid. They ain't having two motherfuckers in the island that do goddamn for Kung Fu. Jim Kelly and fucking Bruce Lee and John Saxon, no, no fighting motherfucking ass don't live. <laughs> he didn't take karate until four years after the damn movie. <laughs> then they make mockery. He gets his ass whipped in the beginning of the movie and Jim Kelly got to help him out. No, motherfucker, you got to make this move. Uh, well, he was one of them smart brothers. He knew that that damn bottom was gonna fall out with that black exploitation shit. So he got into real estate. But he ain't no, so Jim Kelly one of them smart motherfuckers. He said, no, this shit gonna fall by 79. Our shit gonna be through. So Jim Kelly started doing, dealing with him some damn real estate. Before the shit, but see, they knew, they, they said, no, nah, we gotta get a motherfucker that look a certain way. We don't want no Yappa Kehoto motherfucker up here kicking. We want a Jim Kelly with the real nice fucking afro. It's a fucking ritual. See what I'm saying? This is a ritual, because I, because I, and they had to kill Jim Kelly, but they, it, it was a ritual, because look, the other movies, Chinese Connection, Fist of Feeling, and well, Game of Death came out after that, but Chinese Connection, it was three of them before the Chinese Connection, Fist of Fury, Return of the Dragon, Return, Return of the Dragon which also aired after him, but it was completed. But uh, uh, Chuck Norris became an international superstar because of that. But the first one where they put the most amount of money was when Warner Brothers and them picked the shit up. And they said, this is opportune time to do a fucking ritual. This was right in the heat of the Watergate shit. It's a goddamn nigga done blew the damn whistle on the motherfucker up the end of that damn nigga. Found him in the hotel and shit and called his master and ain't work a day and died two years ago on the bus bus to Georgia. Never got a job again, the guy that blew the whistle on the shit. But this was right during the heat of Watergate. And they said, wait a minute. They took Jim Kelly out and they said, wait a minute. He's gonna become an international superstar when they take him out. They had already made this movie and it was a 
and ritual to kill the black man. And the spirit told me this shit back in 73. It told, this, this shit has bothered me for a fucking damn near 28 years. It bothered me. And when, and when, the, when, the, when, the, when the movie came, when they, did, they digitally remastered the shit in 97, and I was going to get a copy, the spirit said, don't get that shit. That was a ritual to kill the fucking black man. You see? So, they do these things. That's why the black man always dies on the, on the, on the other movies, on, on all the sci-fi movies, until they wanted black people to start saving them. Then they start living. Like when the black movies is pitch black. Only, only, only motherfuckers lived on that movie was two black people and one little white girl. You see what I'm saying? That one little white girl, but they had to kill the other white girl just to let her live. I said, that was a good ass movie. This man, hell, only two motherfuckers live in the movie. One more, that, 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 that in man, alhamdulillah, and the black man. Yeah, but he learned quick. You don't live with white motherfuckers sooner or later. And the only reason why he, they both lived because the thing was, the things on the planet was black. When the sun went into eclipse, that's when the melanin realm starts. And the only one to see him was the one with the third eye, the black man in the movie, Pitch Black. Good ass movie. That's one you need to buy and put on the shelf. He was black, his name is um, Ben Diesel. He's a black guy. He's a black guy. He, he's, 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 he's a black guy. Now, but anyway, they do these particular sacrifice in these particular movies and stuff. They do this particular sacrifice and when she completed, they didn't pick her for Queen of the Dam. Look, this, this book hit Ann Rice's top shit. Now that means they got people all over Hollywood just trying to be that. Ann Rice and they ain't gonna put no newcomer, Johnny Come Lately, or unknown in a major movie. Here's a bunch, she got one little movie, Romeo is bleak, Romeo must die, and then the next thing you know, she's, doing, she's trying to complete the Matrix thing, but my point is, is why the hell you think all of a sudden this motherfucker getting all the goddamn work? You know, niggas got to work hard for years before you see them in some shit. All of a damn sudden, you know, she's been out for a while, but still, yes, she's basically unknown. Ann Rice and they ain't gonna put them in the movie now, unless it's a sacrifice. Now the damn movie is gonna be a major ritual. This is how this shit goes. This is, this is how this, this, this thing goes. By the way, if you want to uh, invoke this Zara Band of the ones I was calling on, we got them in the front cover of this particular book, this, this uh, Arca Sophist magazine, but I'm gonna go in that in a few minutes because all of a sudden, you gotta stick around for this. Because I know we've been coming for years saying this shit here is up, but let me tell you something. 